good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we're going to be in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. We are in the New Testament in the book of Mark chapter 7. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands off, often they eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Not commandment of God. Remember, they got in trouble for traditions of men. Well, well they're, they're, they're tripping and stumbling again. Pay attention so you don't fall into these, these pits. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they came from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as of washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Now here in verse 6 is a fulfilled prophecy and Jesus is answering him. He's actually answering him in um, verse 6, 7, and going into 8. Okay. He answered and said unto them, well, hath Elias, or Isaiah, prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, and this is in all caps, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Verse 7, more caps. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. We know that we have to beware of the do doctrine of men and that we're not falling away with any other teaching of any other doctrine other than Jesus Christ was crucified, dead, buried. Third day he arose from the dead and ascended into the heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and has come to judge the quick and the dead. That is the doctrine. That is the gospel. That is the gift of salvation our God gave us when his son came and died on the cross for our sins, for the forgiveness of our sins. The law of Moses, we could never make it. We're too imperfect. So God has covered us with grace and the blood of Jesus. So, but here we see these scribes and Pharisees they're all about men traditions, things that they've made up. They're being men. And they're teaching this to the people. And so this is a prime example of false prophets and how we should be watching out for them here, now, in the days that we live on this earth. And being the end times, we know that the false prophets are going to rise up everywhere. And if you're spending any time at all on YouTube, you're seeing them. You're seeing the false prophets rise up. The, they, they sound good. They look good. They're handsome. They dress nice. They, you know, have a way about them that's like charming. You know, like sort of like a snake charmer. And so you're like, wow, that sounds really good. Oh, man, I never heard anybody put God's word in that way. Well, there's a reason you never heard them do that. Because it's not true. And they're not preaching the truth. They're not teaching God's word. They're teaching what itching ears want to hear. So you have to be careful. And if you don't know the scripture... You can certainly be drawn away because they're twisting it. It sounds like it, but it's not really 
It's not really right. So if you don't know the scripture, you can be led away. And, and, and then you'd be lost. And, and your home wouldn't be forever, eternity in heaven. So beware of false prophets. And here, these Pharisees and scribes are teaching the people that they have to wash their hands. God didn't say that. They have to wash their hands often. And Jesus is here. He's, he's telling them, well, hath Elias, Elijah, prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the traditions of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. You push God away and take your own traditions. They're misleading the flock. They, the, the flock, the sheep, they have no shepherd. I was just talking to a friend yesterday, and, and he was exasperated because this church he's attending, there's a, it, the, the church is filling up, you know, on Sundays. There's all kinds of people that are showing up. But he said it, that the, the, the pastor is not teaching the word of God. You know, he's like tickling people's ears. And and he he was so frustrated, and he's like, I don't know why they 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 can't see this and why they can't do that. And I'm like, Bud, are you beating on your chest and saying I know this and I know that, and I don't know why they don't know that? Whoa, I said, Whoa. He said, I'm doing that, huh? I said, Yeah, you're doing that. You know, you're putting, you're like, you're like, you know, you've discovered some truth. You don't have all the truth. I can tell him he doesn't have all the truth. I don't have all the truth. And nobody has all the truth. I mean, it's just, it's an ongoing learning process. So I told him, I said, you have to be careful. Because you're feeling like you've learned something. And you're like, yeah, and I know this. And I know this, and this is true, and this is real. And Jesus said this. Yes, he did. But did he then tell you to stand on his shoulders and yell at the people in the church that they don't know what they're doing? They're not listening? They, they don't know anything? They're at the church. Somebody planted a seed, and they are at the church. Have they accepted Christ? Have they been saved? Do you know? He doesn't know. No, you, you didn't even ask. You don't know. Don't worry about those Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes at the top that are supposed to be teaching the sheep. Forget about them. Jesus will take care of them. You, our job, is to help the sheep. And, and the babes in Christ. That These people are coming to church because they, they know something that, that they should come to church. They've been called. They've heard the Lord. They're at the church. But who's feeding them? Who's giving them the scripture? No, they're giving them the commandments of men. And my friend is so just like beside himself. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you, you have to feed the babes with milk. They, they, you're, you're going at them all wrong. You can't feed a baby a steak. You have to give them milk. So when, when, when you go to the church and after the service is over and you're talking to people, you know, ask them if, if they've been saved. Have they accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior? That's the first thing you need to know. If they haven't accepted Jesus, then they don't know the good news. And that's what you should be telling them. Not, you know, all this higher up stuff that, oh, I know this and I know that they're not doing that right. And 
leave that alone let that let God <laughs> it's not our place to correct the preachers in a church mm -mm, no you put that in God's hands God will take care of it don't think God isn't seeing what's happening okay if you're there there's a purpose for you there if you're a servant of Jesus Christ and you can reach people but you can't preach to people like you're above them like you're better than them that you know stuff that they don't even have a clue about and that makes them so stupid no it doesn't make them stupid it makes them ignorant because they don't know and that's what you plant the seed tell them about salvation tell them let them understand that you know taking their card and getting it punched 52 weeks in the year every Sunday they uh, they go to church to tell them that that's not going to save them only Jesus can save only Jesus accepting him as your Lord and Savior that's what saves you not going to that building every 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 week that that has no saving grace in it whatsoever it's good fellowship it's good to be in a church where everyone encourages one another and they help each other yeah that's great but it doesn't sound like his church is that experiencing that it sounds like from what he tells me that the pastor is tickling ears and um you know uh checking people's wallets at the door you know he's telling them what they want to hear not what they need to know to receive salvation but i said be careful because you're beating on your chest you know and that that that's not how you would feed a babe in christ you, you don't stand up and go, oh, I'm so much better than you. I know so much more than you. And you, you're just so lost, man. I mean, that's pitiful. That's ridiculous. And berating people, I mean, he has the best intentions. But those will lead you straight to hell. So just know that when you're, you're, you're talking to people and you're trying to help them to understand what it is that Christ came to do, what the purpose of our Savior is. <laughs> we have to be kind and gentle and loving. Like Christ was. Let's think when, when he, he was filled with compassion. And he grieved inside of him. It just grieved him, you know. And it hurt him, you know. <sighs> think about him as a man you know, showing these emotions of a human man. That, you know, we are made in our Father's likeness. We're made in their likeness. So, we have those emotions as well. We get jealous. We get hurt. We, we, we get sad. We get overwhelmed, you know. We grieve in our spirit at times when we see, you know, people, the way things are happening in this world. It grieves us. It grieves our spirit. But that should just make us much more determined to continue to plant the seeds. So anyway, I gave him an assignment. I said, you really need to find out if they're saved have they accepted jesus christ they've been called remember many are called and few are chosen they're there but they're not being fed they're not being fed they're being robbed of their of their monetary their money that's all they're not getting anything they're not being fed the word of god so you know, when you're, if you're in a church and it's like that, it, it's up to you to meet one-on-one -on -one with the people after service is over, you know. You know, check somebody out. Go over and say, hey, how you doing? I'm so glad to see you here today. You know, how's your day going? Is every, everything good? You know, and talk to them. And strike up a conversation. Because if you don't do that, if you don't take that first step, then how are you to know? Are they saved? Just because they're in that building doesn't mean they're saved. Doesn't mean they've accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. 
it doesn't mean that at all it's a building and and the the people are going there but are they saved have they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior if they don't know that if they don't understand that if nobody's told them that they could go to that church every day till they die and not be saved going to church every Sunday does not save you it's accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior that's what saved us him he saved us he died on the cross for us to give us the forgiveness of our sins that we as puny little humans who are incapable of being perfect need that grace that mercy that forgiveness because we are so heavy laden with sin that we don't even recognize sometimes that you know uh, the thought that went through our head when we saw that person do that and, 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 and the other person did that and you you know these thoughts that run through your head <clears throat> remember Jesus said if your hand causes you to sin cut it off it's better to get to heaven, you know, lame or, or maimed than to get there with all your, to go to hell with all your members. If your eye sins, pluck it out, you know. Um, so if you're thinking things that are not in line with the scripture or with Jesus' teaching, then you just sinned. Do you recognize at the end of the day, every thought that went through your head? I mean, can you go, oh, yeah, I thought that, and I thought that, and I thought that, and, you know, sit down and just run everything through your head like a movie, and you re absolutely remember every every single thought you had, and you can tell, no, I didn't sin, no, I didn't sin, no, I didn't, no, that wasn't, no, 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 that, no, I didn't sin. Are you sure? I mean, <laughs> we don't have that ability. That's why we have to ask for forgiveness and should be asking for forgiveness every night at bedtime. Or immediately if you recognize that you've said something or thought something or, or was, you know, contemplating doing something, even to think of it. Remember, Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust in your eyes, you have sinned. You know, if you're looking at her and wanting her, then you're sinning. You have sinned. You have sinned by looking at her in that way. So, you know, he's warning us. He's telling us. He's teaching us. This is what we need to share with the babes in Christ. The, the milk. The milk first is the gospel. That's why I told my friend, find out if they're saved. If they're not saved, then give them the good news. Tell them to get baptized and seek repentance. And, and I told him, I said... I, and he says, well, I don't know. I said, do you know any of the scriptures in regards to repentance? And he goes, no, no, I really don't. He said, um, I said, well, that's your other assignment then is to get on Google or and look in your thesaurus or look in your con Strong's Concordance and look up the word repent or repentance, you know, and get the scriptures out, you know, and, and, and write them down and look at them. And see, you know, and pick out a couple of them that, you know, you can relate to someone as an example to show them, you know, um, what repentance is, what it means, why we do it, you know, what the purpose of repenting. And, and so that they can understand as a, as a new babe in Christ, you know, if they're uh, going to accept Christ, they need to repent. Well, what does that mean? Well, you're talking to someone who doesn't have any knowledge of the word, doesn't understand. They're a babe in Christ. They're on milk. You've got to feed them like a baby. You can't give them steak bones. They can't digest it. They can't handle it. They can't consume it. They can't eat it. Jesus said he's the bread. He's the blood, the wine. You know, he said to do this in often remembrance of him. They don't understand that. They don't know what the bread is. They don't know the word. They don't, they don't know. But they're there because they've been called. They've been called. Do you know the role that you could play 
in helping someone to come across the finish line, to get saved, to be baptized, to repent, to accept him as your Lord and Savior? <sighs> wow, we cannot be playing around. We do not have time to be playing around. People's lives are on the, lo on the line. If you don't tell them, then, you know, as it says, I think it's, um, is it Ezekiel or Isaiah? If you don't tell them, and if you tell them and they don't repent, then their blood is on their own head. If you don't tell them, their blood is on your head. Have you told them? We're responsible for telling them. This is what our job is. This is what Jesus said, is to go and spread the good news to the four corners of the earth. <sighs> okay, I know. And my timer is beeping, so I'm going to have to excuse myself for a minute. You won't even know I was gone. So anyway, when we go to church, and there are people there, and they're new, and you know they're new. If you've been going to that church, you know when there's someone new shows up. You can see, they can recognize them, you know. Well, there's Harry and Sally, and there's uh, so-and-so with their kids. And, you know, you recognize the parishioners, right? But if there's somebody new there, you, I'm telling you, ooh, you make sure you go over and you greet them. If nobody else is, don't you worry what, what, what nobody else is doing. You, you know it's right to go and talk to them, to greet them and welcome them. Make them feel welcome. You want them to stay. You want them to accept Christ. You don't want them to be lost. You don't want them burning in hell. You know? So you get your little tail over there and you kick up a conversation. Hey, I, I see you. I, I don't recognize you. Is this your first time here? Yeah, I've only been coming for a couple of weeks myself, but it's a very nice church. Everybody's very friendly. You know, whatever. <laughs> Look at the weather. Isn't it horrible? Look at it. It's beautiful. It's, it's rainy. We need the rain so much. Strike up a conversation <laughs> and find out. You know, if they're saved, they're there because God's called them. Somebody planted a seed. Someone else waters. And God brings the increase. <laughs> We're running out of time. We're running out of time. We know everyone's not going to be saved, but are we doing everything we can do? We have to do everything we can do. That's the best I can encourage you. The rest is up to you, but just remember, if you don't tell them, their blood is on your head. If you tell them, they don't listen, their blood is on their own head. You don't want it on your head. So, don't be afraid to speak up. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a church I've never been to before. And no one said a word to me. No one greeted me. No one said hi. I mean, it was like almost like they were turning away from me. Because they didn't know what to say. Or they were, you know, too bashful or shy. Or for whatever reason, nobody in the church would talk to me. I left there and nobody even said hello. Nobody said goodbye, glad you're leaving. <laughs> nothing. No, nothing, nothing. Don't let your church be that way. You can change it. You can make a difference. We all can make a difference. Jesus didn't say, okay, now let's see. I just want Joe, and I want Gloria, and I want Daniel, and Margaret. Okay, now, that's all I want. I mean, just those. Those are the only ones that can go and spread the good news. Nobody else. Don't open your mouth. Just, you're off the hook. Just go on home. Crawl into your bed. You know, pull the covers up over your head, or whatever you need to do to hide from the world. Because it's all about you, 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 you. If that's what you have to do. 
didn't do that. But God didn't just call those four little people. He calls us all. If you've been called, you've been called. If you're chosen, then then the few you're the few that was chosen. Do you know how big that is? So many are not going to make it into heaven. So many are not going to get there. If people are at your church and you've never seen them before, they could be new to the neighborhood. They could have talked to someone, a neighbor or something that attends that church and they, they show up and their neighbor's not there that day and there's nobody that there that they know, you know? It shouldn't matter. If they come into God's house, you should talk to them. You should acknowledge them. You should acknowledge that somebody planted a seed. Remember what Paul said? Paul plants the seed, Apollo waters it, and God brings the increase. Are you a servant of Jesus Christ? Then serve him. Serve him with all your worth. Any way that you can, you serve him. You reach out. <laughs> you pull them up on the narrow path with you. And you help each other. We all help each other. We're a family. And that's what families are supposed to do. Now I know there's a lot of us that have families that, you know, don't act like family. They don't acknowledge you. They don't spend time with you. They don't make a way for you. They don't, you know, go out of their way to do something for you. They're, you know, they're just relatives. You know? <laughs> they're not really family that you know cares for you and watches out for you and loves you and and cares about you and want, wants to make sure you're okay and if you have a need that they can do anything to fill that need that they're going to do it did you know that's what you signed up for didn't you know that's what you signed up for. Remember when Jesus' mother and brother, and uh, they came, and he said, Who is my mother, and who is my brother? It's not always your blood relatives that are family. Some of them never acknowledge you or they don't care for you. Or they don't care about you. But you Christian brothers and sisters, Christians can't wait. They love to help. They may be too bashful to say anything if they're in a need. They may not want to ask. They'll ask Father and Father will make a way, you know, He'll, he'll put a little, you know, little bird on your shoulder and says, Go talk to them. Ask them if they need any food. You know, he talks to us. <laughs> Don't you ever hear him? Don't you ever hear him talking to you, telling you to do something? Hmm? He does. Are you listening? Are you obeying? Are you going over and asking them if they need any food? So, you know, I was cleaning out my pantry. Uh, you, you're new here, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, my name's Gloria. How you doing? Yeah. Oh, 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 hi. How you doing? Yeah. Okay. We, we introduce ourselves now. And so I say, you know, I, 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 I don't really know what to do here. I, I've got my pantry and I've got to clean it out. It's, you know, so I have some things that are, the dates are getting close to expiring. Are, um, they're passing their best by date. And I'm looking for someone who needs food. Do you guys need any food? Do you know anyone that needs food? Yeah, I have boxes at my house, but I, I can't really get in them. You know, I'm here in this wheelchair, and it's very hard for me. But can you come by and help me? 
you know, and I'll give you some food. Doing his job, doing his work, caring for one another. I mean, what did Jesus say when he, when Joseph and Mary came, had to come back to Jerusalem three days later after they had left him there? Because they didn't notice he was missing? Because in the throng of all the people leaving Jerusalem? And Mary says, why do you worry us like that? Why did you do that? And he said, don't you know I'm about my father's business? That's us. We're to be about our Father's business. I just want to encourage you to do all that you can to help others. And and if you are going through your pantry and you see you have food in there that's getting up, up on its you know expiration date or, or, or you've let it slip and it's a year out of date, believe me, <laughs> I've, been, I've been in my life had to go to the food bank for food. And there's lots of cans there that are out of date. They're past their expiration date. They're not their expiration date, excuse me. They're past their best buy date. But we know that food is still good in the can for up to like five years past the best buy date. It just means the best buy date just means that it's the best by that date. Not that it becomes unedible. Now, if you see something that says use by a certain date then you don't want to ex go exceed that date you want to use it by that date so if you're going through your pantry and you're checking out you know make sure you can fill in any holes that you're missing anything and you come across stuff and it's like use by you know oh my goodness in six weeks this is going to be out of date and nobody can eat it nobody can use it i've got to find somebody there's going to be somebody somewhere that can use this. Okay, I can get somebody, so and so, to take this to the food, food bank for me. You know, if I, there's nobody at my church that needs it, you know, or or if there's not a, a, if there's a church in your area that has a pantry, you know, that they're constantly giving, you know, to people to help. That you know, there's so many people now because some people are getting laid off. They're losing their jobs. They have no money coming in and um but you still have you know to, to eat people still have to eat they have kids that still need to eat and no not everybody is put back for emergencies that there, there's a lot of people that you know just didn't believe that that would ever happen here in america that we would be in a position where people would be hungry not only homeless on the street but also hungry on the street here in America but you know we have our illustrious uh, potato king in the um, potato house you know that guy do everything you can for other people that are around you and pay attention at your church if there's somebody who shows up there that you don't know then go introduce yourself and say hello and make them feel welcome. It, even if you don't find out if they're saved or not, if you're kind to them, maybe they'll come back next week. Especially if you say, oh, I'll see you next week. Oh, did you know we have Sunday school at such and such time? Oh, and we have Bible study on such and such day at such and such time? And uh, we used to meet here at the church, but now with the electric bills and stuff like that, we're meeting in individuals' homes. And this week we'll be at my house. Here's my address, you know. Well, I would love for you to come in and, and have a Bible study with us on Wednesday. You know, reach out. You know, don't miss the opportunities. Oh, we are so blessed to have the job that we have, to have the the work that we have is there is there anything that you wouldn't do for Jesus is there anything you wouldn't do for Jesus You know, if you can't answer that question right off the top of your head, spend a little time alone with yourself and think about it, okay? 
All right. Hold on a second. Okay, so you know how I get distracted sometimes. <laughs> and I have to admit, my, my memory is starting to slip a little bit. So, but in June, I'll be 70 years old. So I still think I'm doing pretty good. I, you know, I don't feel like I'm a danger to the community or anything, you know, because, you know, I'm uh, too forgetful. But anyway, so what I'm trying to say is, I think we were on verse 8. <laughs> so, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things ye do. Verse 9, And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition, the traditions of men. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whosoever curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. Here he's saying, Honor your father and mother is like to care for them. Make sure that they have what they need. You know, they made sure you were fed and you got grown and you had the things that you needed. Well, do they have heat for their house? Do they have food in their refrigerator? Are they skipping meals because there's not enough food in your mom and dad's house? Did their, did their phone get turned off? Did their light bill get turned off? You know, we're responsible to look after them in their old age as they looked after us when we were young and growing up. Now I know there's some of us we didn't have very good parents but we always had God. <laughs> he was always watching out for us so do his will not the traditions of men. So, but ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. Give your money to the church, never mind about your mom and dad. You don't have to listen to God. He's only God. This is what they're this is what these Pharisees were doing. Telling people, oh you don't worry about that. You know, you don't have to do that. As long as you're giving your money to the church, you know, putting it in the temple offering, then hey, you're good with us. While you're, you know, you don't even realize you're just brushing you off right down into the dustpan of hell honor your father and mother so making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered and many such things do ye it's not just one or two things it's many things that you're doing the traditions of men and not the commandments of God and when he had called all the people unto him he said unto them Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. It's not what you eat. It's not what you put in your mouth. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the, from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? You know, he's like flabbergasted. Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into a man, it cannot defile him? Doesn't mean it won't make you sick. You know, if you ate something with maggots on it or something. But what he's saying is, it's not what you eat. Like dirty hands or, or a dirty dish that you didn't get clean enough, you know. 
I could tell you a little joke about soap and water. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you this real quick. There's this little joke about so soap and water. The preacher, this couple, in this family, um, asked the preacher to their house for dinner. So he got there and, and um, he, he was sitting there and the plates and all are on the table and he's looking at them and he's thinking, that's still got food on it. Anyway, so then the lady serves the dinner and he eats and the food was so delicious and and uh and, and and he didn't want to say anything about the the um the 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 plate but he 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 was curious did they not have soap and water or you know to get the dishes cleaned and somehow it came up and he and she said oh well that's the best that soap and water can do and he's like oh 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 okay and and then um, about that time, she gathers up all the plates in her hand and goes and opens the back door and puts the dishes down on the porch and goes, soap and water. Dogs. <laughs> the dogs to lick the plates. Dog named soap. Dog named water. <laughs> anyway, just a little joke. I thought I'd tell that. Maybe that'll make it stick in your head a little better. But I, th I thought that was very funny. So, I don't know if he ever accepted dinner <laughs> invitations again. But anyway, he said she was quite a good cook. Okay. And so when he had called up all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples a asked him concerning the parable. And he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without or outside entereth into a man, it cannot defile him? Because it entereth not into his heart. Remember, God looks on our heart. And in, in, the, in the times back in the Old Testament, God would take out their stony heart, their heart. Their, they hardened their heart to him. They didn't want anything to do with him. Oh, no, they had their idols, all their graven images, and you know. And they took all the blessings that he gave them and put it before these false idols, which really... You know, made God angry, and he warned them, and they wouldn't listen. You know, and he would punish them. And then he would say, I'm going to take out the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. One that has feelings and compassion, you know. So, it's your heart that God looks on. And it's what comes out of your mouth, it comes from your heart. So if you're hard-hearted, you're going to say hard-hearted things. You're going to be ugly to people. You're going to say mean and hateful things. You're not going to have love and compassion. The fruits of the Spirit are far from you. You know, the, the words, you say something, but then you do something else. It's, you know, you're just giving God lip service. You know, it has to come from your heart. When you're caring for other people, like, you know, meeting those new people that showed up at your church and greeting them and making them feel welcome, you know, making them welcome to come back again, you know, inviting them to Bible study, you know, just, I'm telling you, to have been in churches where nobody said a single word to me, you know wasn't like I got there late and made a big commotion and went and sat myself at the front of the church, you know. Mm -mm. No, I'd just go in and get to the back and there wherever I could and, you know, find a spot. I didn't go to the front of the church and take the front seats. Jesus told us not to do that. So if I go and I just sit in the church there anywhere, you know, um, there might be somebody in the pew with me, maybe not. 
But then after the service is over and everybody's getting up and they're milling around and they're filing out and they're walking right past me and not saying a word. The pastor comes right, walks right past me, you know. He goes, stands at the door where he can shake everybody's hand when they're going out. And, and, he, and he doesn't say, oh, you're new here. Hi, I, I'm, you know, pastor so-and-so. And, and you, then you introduce yourself. But no, <sighs> not a word. It was like I was invisible. Did I go back? No. No, I didn't go back. If anyone had a said a kind word to me and acknowledged me, I would have went back. I would have went back. I wouldn't have just went to the next church on the list in the phone book, you know, looking for a place to call home. So think about that. That person could be me. You wouldn't walk past me, would you, and not say anything? Yeah, you never know. We have entertained angels unawares. <laughs> okay, now let's continue. So it's it's what comes out of your heart. Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draw, purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's why you just look in verse 21 and verse 22. And think, did any I do any of that? Did I have any kind of thought like that during my day to day? Mm, not really sure. God, forgive me my thought. Forgive me for anything that I thought that was, you know, not in line with what you want me to be or want me want me to think or do. Or God, forgive me for thinking something. God, forgive me for my sins, known and unknown. You want to keep your slate clean, you know, and I said, you know, it's like, you know, repentance is like a magic marker, but it's not magic. It, it's, it's not magic. It's a blessing. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle when Jesus was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from dead. That's a miracle. So it's a miracle. You c can just... Ask for forgiveness of your sins and it and it wipes them all away off your slate. Your slate is clean. And you rise up the next morning and you ask God to direct your day and direct your way and you know to guide you and, and to keep you on the narrow path. You know. We really, really, really need to be conscientious. Don't play church. Don't play church. Don't give God lip service. I'm guilty. I do it. I'm human. I don't intend to. It's not like I set out, okay, today I am going to tick God off. No. I don't do it intentionally. But when I'm not, when I'm not commit it when I'm not following through on what I know I should do and what I'm telling others to do I'm guilty I mean the sin is just piling up on me lip service to God I'm doing that because I'm not following through on what I'm telling people the word of God says we should do why because I'm a puny human being incapable of being perfect but i have a savior who knew that about me from the foundation of the world he chose me knowing exactly who i am exactly knowing exactly what i would do and not do where i would mess up 
where I would come through with flying colors. So when I mess up, God forgive me. I'm not perfect. And it it, it softened my heart, Lord. Don't let me become so, you know, discouraged by the things in this world. Don't let me be bothered by them, Lord. You told me. In Matthew 24, verse 6. All these things must come to pass. But see ye be not troubled. For the end is not yet. See ye be not troubled. Don't let the things in this world distract you away from doing God's will. From doing what you know is right in God's eyes. What he's telling us we should be doing. That we he's telling us here that it's not what we eat that defiles us. It's what comes out of us. The words that we use when we talk to other people what he's saying so just keep that in mind and when you realize you know you're not you know spending your prayer time like you should or you're not you know um, being out there on the you know the track for God you know every minute sometimes I, I, I meet people and I'm talking to them and before I leave I forget to say a prayer you know, forget to pray with them. I'll, I mean, how hard is that? <laughs> you know, again, <laughs> I'm not perfect. But, you know, um, I, I do try to be uh, um, in line with what God is telling me I should be doing. And keep a fleshy heart. But I'm not perfect. But that's what he knew. When he died for me and you, he knew we're not perfect. But he loves us anyway. Okay, so I'm going to try to wrap this up here pretty quick now. But I'm going to read the verse 21 and verse 22 again. Because these are the things that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries. If you look at a woman with lust, you're guilty of adultery. Pluck out your eye, remember? Fornications, murders, that doesn't mean go around plucking out your eye. That just means that it would be better to be blind in one eye than to go to hell with both of them. That's a serious warning when you think about that. Okay, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, or foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. And from thence he arose and went, out, it went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek and a Cy Syrophenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. That would be the children of God, the Israelites. He came for the Israelites. For it is not meat or good to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. The little dogs. So, but she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. It was her faith. She didn't get just go, Oh, all right, and walk away. She was reasoning with him. Lord, e even the dogs eat the crumbs from the floor from the little children. 
So she was just asking for a crumb. And he had compassion. He's so full of compassion. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of the Decapolis. That's the Decapolis meaning ten, ten cities there together. And they bring unto him one that was dead and had an impediment in his speech. Oh, deaf, excuse me, and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears. And he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed. Our Lord sighed and saith unto him, Ephphatha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man, but the more he charged them, so much more the great deal they published it. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. The people were amazed, as would we be amazed when we see things being done that like that. You know, people that have the gift of healing. He loves us so much. And it's not like he's like, okay, you know, you, you want me as your Lord and Savior. You take me as your Lord and Savior. Come on. He has expectations. You know, he's saying, he's telling us, you know, keep, if you love me, keep my commandments. You, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not listen to what I say? You know, and not do what I say do. This is what our Lord is telling us. He's communicating. <laughs> As it was then, so will it be now and in the future. Our God doesn't change. So, whatever you're doing in this world, if you're serving God, keep at it. If you're not serving God, get on it. <laughs> and as always, I love you. <laughs>